And let's jump over to our man, Teddy Kegstad. Folks, you can check out Teddy's outstanding newsletter, the Tiger Forex Report. He puts it out every Monday. It's a weekly issue. He puts out updates throughout the week when warranted. He's got a couple great subscriber webinars that you automatically gain access to if you sign up. You get a 30-day money-back guarantee. You can check out the newsletter from a month. You can check out the archives of the webinars. If it's not something you think you can use, maybe you're not going to trade Forex, but I encourage you to check it out, folks, because I think there's a tremendous amount of information in this newsletter that he puts out every week, even beyond trading the Forex pairs themselves. Teddy Kegstat, we got quite a morning going on. Uh, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. U.S. dollar is getting hammered today. Yeah, uh, great day to have you on, man, as we have some action in the CPI. We got rates going lower, and we got the dollar going lower. Uh, what, what do you think the action and the trends? Where do you want to kick things off? Maybe the dollar index? Uh, sure. Well, the CPI, obviously, is something that has a, a lot to do with the, the way trading is going this morning. And I, I think that the number is being kind of overplayed, if you will, um, by the way the markets are reacting right now. I mean, the reality is you have a number. To, is it tracking in the right direction? Yes, um, but it's still a situation where it's like uh, instead of rear-ending somebody at 65 miles an hour, um, you hit them at 64 miles an hour. The fact is you're still rear-ending somebody, you know. So I, I don't think that the mar markets are going to maintain this trend. I think it's one of those, you know, the number came out. It's, it's re being reactive right now. <clears throat> um, we'll see how it pans out over the next couple sessions. And as far as CPI, you know, it's tracking the right direction for us, but German CPI came out yesterday and it was extremely high, you know, and their economy is crumbling, you know, so that's going to have an impact definitely in the longer term. If that continues to trend that way, it's going to impact our CPI as well. So I wouldn't get too very, you know, jovial, if you will, about that there's the, the rate hikes and everything is coming into play and doing the right thing when it comes to the CPI numbers and the inflation numbers. Yeah, it will be interesting. Um in terms of we have a Fed meeting two weeks from today, and it seems like the messaging was pretty strong that they're going to hike. And even listening to some of the analysts this morning, they're saying, you know, it's probably not a, a big enough surprise number to change that for July. But then we get two months of data before they really get September in terms of we get the July data, we get the August data. So there's a lot of data even before we get into September, let alone a whole earnings cycle um, that comes with it. And we'll see where we go from there. What do you think about this price level in general, Teddy, with the dollar index? I'm getting a little technical here, but just when mm -hmm. I put this dollar index, you know, on any chart, really, whether you're talking about weekly, daily, I mean, you're back to levels, right, that we were chopping around sure. April and May. You're back to the levels we were at kind of in January. Do you see this as an area of potential support? Do you see that? Is that the critical area? If we break through, we go lower? How do you look at this area? Because as a technician, and I like the fundamentals as well. But that's kind of a cool area we're at right now, kind of right to mm -hmm. those lows that we had in April and back in February for the dollar index. Right. Well, I don't think that we're really I don't think it's, there's a new trend emerging. I think what we're doing is we're pushing the upper boundaries of the range that we've been in, you know, respective of whatever currency cross you're talking about and even the markets in general. You know, I mean, the reality yes. is we've been in a big sideways trade for months now, you know, sure. and I think that right now, especially like when you see how the euro is breaking out to the upside, the pounds breaking out to the upside, you know, it's pushing that upper boundary of the range that it's been in for months. Uh, do I think it's going to be an escalated trend? that we have a new thing in motion for months? I don't think so. You know, I mean, we have, the question is, are we going to have one more rate hike or not before September? Whether we do or not, we're still ahead of the curve when it comes to other central banks. You have the Bank of Canada that has a rate decision to, coming up today, later on. And you also have the Bank of, <coughs> excuse me, the ECB that we know is most likely going to raise rights at their next meeting. Um, so this is all going to balance out in the, in, the, in the short run, meaning that you're going to see a weakness against the dollar because we know that there's rate hikes coming from these other central banks, whether we pull the trigger or not. You know, that will influence when things happen as we get closer to that meeting, you know, and especially as we get to the last one, we have a distance between September. You know, that's where we have that two month lag. We'll see if that's when we have any real trends, meaning that you'll see the euro and the pound really exercising strength and the dollar index getting hit. I, I don't see that that's really going to happen, though. You know, I mean, the, the dollar index, it's not that the dollar is so strong. It's just that right now, these other currencies our news reactionary gaining strength, meaning that it's only a short-term knee-jerk reaction. Overall, the economies, if you look at the EU, are collapsing. It's not sustainable. You know, their numbers are not going to be trending. I heard you before I came on the air saying, well, there's a lot of numbers that are going to, you know, see what, what the Fed's going to do in the fall. Well, 
the numbers in Europe have not been tracking in the right direction, you know, and I think you're going to see that that continue, you know, and if that does, you know, you're going to see a lot of um, pull or strength come back to the U.S. dollar. So meaning don't get too excited on these breakouts right now. If anything, I'd be looking okay. to take profits, you know. Nice. Sorry, I lost you there at the end, that, Teddy. Okay, that's right. No, and that's that's where I'm looking at is right now. I think right now you have to look to start looking to take profits and raise your stops. You know, don't get married to these breakouts is what I'm saying because the volatility nice. is starting to spike up. But if you look at the moves, they're not really that severe. It's just they've been so tight and range yes. trady that it looks like they're really, you know, really doing something right now. Yeah, especially compared to kind of the run we had the last couple of years. And I was joking with one of my best buddies, Teddy, in um, – Switzerland, and he's getting married in September in Spain. And so mm -hmm. I was sending him some dollars for a share of a house over there in September. And he and I got 110 on the euro. And I was telling him I wanted 95 because I'm going to be the best man in the wedding. Right. Mm -hmm. And he tells me I'm lucky that I'm not getting 160 because that's where it was recently. And it kind of just put it in context, though, in terms of just like you're saying, I mean, we've gotten these moves, but boy. Mm -hmm when you back it up even five years, six years, pretty remarkable how large some of these moves have been. And then you go this year alone, I have the euro up for instance, we're mm -hmm. between about 105 and 110 the whole year basically. Um, and meanwhile, just kind of puts things in context of, yeah, we were at 160, which is crazy to think about, let right. alone 95, not that long ago in some of those currencies. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, of course, today I, I got to send him a text saying, thanks for 110 because the euro's at 111 already today. No, but I kid. Uh, right. What about, Crude, Teddy. Let's talk a little bit of crude, mm -hmm. man, because we got a little bit of a bid in crude. We're at $75. We're climbing higher today. We just got a 76 print. What do you think of the price of crude? Uh, well, that's see, now that's this gets up to the whole range trade thing, which I just talked about with the currencies. Today, we broke out to the upside. You know, this was a level, you know, that swing high that was established last month is a critical resistance area. So the key, the, the question is, is can nice. we close where we're at or higher today? You know, if we do nice. that, then that means we have a potential, I think, to still push maybe up towards the $80 mark. You know, okay. I mean, that's, but it, once again, if the markets are still in a range trade trend really then that means you don't get married to this spike it's going to be a head fake you know so i think you have to see how much the, the these markets all line up meaning like are they nice. going to spike into these new new highs and new lows or are they going to start to really surge you know so we need to close around 76 dollars i would say in oil and then see if it can actually hold a trade up around the 78 79 level i don't see that happening i see more of it spiking up and then retracing back down Teddy, I appreciate the nine minutes as always, man. It was a quick segment. I look forward to talking to you next week, brother. Sounds good. Take care, Tommy. Okay, have a great one. We'll be right back, folks.